This is the new Pixel Fold, by far the most ambitious Pixel Google has brought to the table and one of the most interesting phones I've ever had the opportunity to review. Everything from its unique design to its super high price tag has the tech world buzzing. There's a lot to cover when talking Pixel Fold. Now, Google was cool enough to send this over for me to check out and I've been playing with it for about a week. So today I wanna go over how my experience has been during that short time, going over both the positive and the negative, all to give you a better sense of whether or not the Pixel Fold is the right phone for you. And real quick, in case you're new here, I'm Jason. I'd really appreciate it if you take a quick second to press that like button. It really does help me out. And if you want to stay up to date with the latest and greatest tech, don't forget to subscribe to the channel as well. Okay, first and foremost, let's jump right into the physical design of the Pixel Fold without question the most unique feature of Google's latest phone. Now, folding phones aren't exactly new, but I think it's fair to say that it's far from being commonplace within the smartphone market, which made the announcement of this phone all the more interesting. And I know it's only been about a week, but I'm just going to put it out there. This is by far the best put together Pixel I've ever experienced. Google has taken its successful modernized Pixel design and applied it to the Fold, but has has refined it to where it fits the need of a folding device while also making it visually appealing. For example, the Pixel Fold is the first Pixel to finally introduce a matte finish on the back panel. It makes the phone a lot cleaner as it greatly reduces the amount of fingerprints that it collects. I got the phone in its black obsidian color, which I think looks really nice, definitely a bit stealthier and aggressive than its white counterpart. The matte finish contrasts nicely against the polished alloy frame and camera housing, which do have a darkened tint so it's not overly flashy, and it all comes together to provide for a very modern, premium look and feel. Now, the camera housing does deviate from Google's signature ledge design, which makes sense here as it would look awkward if it stretched across the entire back of the phone, but it's close enough to where it's still recognizably Pixel. Now, one of the most important aspects of the Pixel Fold's build is going to be the hinge, and I'm happy to say that Google did a good job here. It too is made out of metal with the same finish as the phone's frame for that clean, integrated look. And right off the bat, what I love about the way the hinge works is that it provides for a completely flat, gapless close. There's no awkward space in between the fold, which again makes for a really clean look. And when you open or close the Pixel Fold, there's a good amount of firmness to the hinge that comfortably lets you adjust the fold to basically any angle that you want. There's no parts where it gets loose or collapses on itself. And when you do completely close it, it doesn't slam or make for any uncomfortable glass on glass action. It closes shut in a very soft and kind of addicting way. Now, time will only tell how long the hinge will hold up after long-term use, but one week later, I think Google nailed it. There's a lot that could have gone wrong, but I gotta say, it looks and feels really good for a first implementation. Now, the other component of the Pixel Fold's design that we have to talk about are the dimensions of this phone. It's probably one of its greatest strengths. First of all, in its folded state, the Fold has dimensions that very closely mirrors that of a standard Passport, which I like. You can see how it compares to the taller but slimmer Galaxy Z Fold 4. I find the Pixels to be more familiar and enjoyable to use as you get a pretty generous 5.8 inch edge to edge display that doesn't look as awkward. Open it up and you get a pretty massive 7.6 inch display that gives you this tablet like experience. They're both full HD OLED panels with the larger internal display coming with a slightly higher resolution but slightly less pixels per inch. Now from a design standpoint, we have to talk about the bezel here that no cap I was concerned about when Google first announced this phone. I thought it was a bit much when looking at the pictures but now that I've been hands on with it for a week, I've barely noticed it and it hasn't been an issue mainly because the screen is so large or a lot more forgiving about these kind of design elements. There's also been some early criticism around the Pixel Fold not being able to fully open flat. I personally don't find this to be an issue at all. You could see that it's pretty much at 108 degrees here. This complaint is kind of a nothing burger. But I think the reason why people may be quick to jump to this conclusion is the crease in the center. I recognize this may be the first folding phone for many folks as this form factor is still very new, which may draw some early concerns that the crease on the Pixel Fold is an issue. Now, I'll say as someone who's reviewed other folding devices, the crease on the Pixel Fold is commensurate with the competition. Again, really nothing out of the ordinary. You basically don't notice it when you're head on looking at the screen, but you will notice it at off angles, which can be jarring if you're not used to it. Plus, most folding devices, the Pixel Fold included, come standard with a really reflective screen cover that, to me, makes the crease more noticeable. I don't recommend taking it off as it can damage the screen, and based on my experience as a reviewer, there's nothing here with the display that is abnormal in the world of folding phones. But let's get into how the Pixel Fold performs as well as some of its best features. Now, one week later, again, I'm just gonna come on and say it, this is the best performing Pixel I've ever experienced when it comes to speed and optimization. It's powered by Google's Tensor G2 chip, the same processor that's powering the Pixel 7 Pro, but to me, the Fold performs noticeably better. Take the refresh rate on the displays, for example, they both come with 120 hertz variable refresh rates and they perform unbelievably well. Again, by far the best I've experienced on any Pixel. Even scrolling through Twitter, which is notoriously choppy on Android devices, 
sounds like butter on this phone, it makes the entire experience of navigating around Android 13 an absolute joy. Apps load quickly, gaming is stutter free, and a lot of fun on this massive display. And multitasking works surprisingly well given that this is Google's first swing here. All you have to do is swipe up from the bottom to reveal this dock, select the app that you want to multi-screen with, and drag it over to either half of the display, and boom, you're good to go. Now, one week later, I have to admit, I've been enjoying this folded experience so much that it's almost made me not need the larger main display. It may be because this is more familiar and what I'm used to, but this screen and layout works so well, you almost forget that you're privy to a near tablet experience inside. And I think a reason for that could also be because one of the current limitations with the Pixel Fold, and that's the lack of optimization of many of the most popular apps in its unfolded state. You can see scrolling around in these apps is kind of a letdown as these bars on the sides are pretty horrendous. Now, the few apps that are optimized like YouTube and most of Google's apps look great. So I'm hoping the developers get to updating their apps for this phone soon because that will definitely motivate me to open up this thing more often. Now, when it comes to security, the Pixel Fold comes with a built-in fingerprint sensor on the power button. It's an old school approach to biometric security, but I personally think this was a smart move by Google. It's super easy to set up and way faster than the in-display fingerprint readers on the other Pixels. And it still allows the phone to maintain a very clean aesthetic. The Pixel Fold also supports face unlock as well, which is great if face ID is your thing, and both perform really well. Now, when it comes to battery life on the Pixel Fold, so far it's been pretty good, which is kind of surprising. And I say it that way because despite this phone having multiple displays that run at high refresh rates, as well as a battery size that isn't anything I'd classify as extraordinary, the Fold has somehow delivered some pretty solid battery life. On normal day-to-day -day use, I've been able to get through a full day no problem, and even on days where I'm pushing it with watching videos full screen, it's held up fine without causing any charge anxiety. Now, I will say though that I have noticed it getting hot when doing certain things, mainly shooting video, which is not exactly uncommon. Many Pixels have overheating issues, but so far, I would say that the battery life overall on the Pixel Fold is pretty solid. I am curious though to see how it holds up over time. But let's get into the camera performance on the Pixel Fold as it does bear the Pixel name, so we're gonna wanna make sure that it lives up to the high standards that's associated with it. First off, this phone is loaded with cameras. It comes with five total. You got three cameras on the rear, starting with the 48 megapixel primary wide angle camera, paired with two additional cameras, one ultra wide and one five times telephoto zoom, both clocking in at 10 megapixels. You also get a selfie camera on the front display that comes in at 9.5 megapixels, as well as an inner camera on the bezel here that clocks in at eight. So let's start with the worst first. This inner camera here is pretty meh, especially for a pixel. Now to be fair, this camera I don't think is really meant to be used for shooting stills. It's more like a webcam if you wanna take a zoom call or something, so I'm not gonna beat it up too badly. Now the selfie camera on the front display performs way better. It's sharp and has that very light likable image processing that pixels are known for. The portrait shots look great, but I wish it did a little bit better with subject separation. But I'm happy to say that the stills coming out of the main cameras on the back perform really well. The pictures are sharp with a good amount of contrast Google loves to sprinkle in. The dynamic range is excellent even in tough lighting, and they definitely give up that wow factors that pixels are known for, especially when viewing the pictures on this big screen. And because of this form factor, there are some fun things that you can do with the Pixel Fold, like take selfies with the cameras on the rear. You could have it so the front display acts as a viewfinder so you can take some super high quality selfies. It's a bit weird trying to get it framed up well, but you do get used to it and it's a great way to leverage this phone's functionality. The Pixel Fold can also shoot 4K video in both 30 and 60 frames per second, and much like all the Pixels before, the quality here is just okay. The footage is sharp, and you do get some decent dynamic range, but the colors are a bit oversaturated, and you do start to see a lot of noise introduced into the frame the wider you go. So overall, I would say the camera performance on the Pixel Fold is really good, especially when talking still image photography. It definitely meets expectations. But in all honesty, there's nothing here that I haven't seen in other Pixels, even ones that are way cheaper. And that brings us to the final thing about this phone that we have to talk about, and that's the Pixel Fold's heavy price tag. $1,800 is no laughing matter, and I think it automatically prices out a sizable chunk of the consumer market. And for those that can actually afford one, is it even worth dropping all that money on a device as experimental as this one? Well, it's only been a week, so take everything I say with a grain of salt, but I'm gonna say the answer is gonna be no for most people. Majority of folks do not need nor will probably use all the Pixel Fold has to offer, and considering that they could get their needs met by going with something like the pretty incredible Pixel 7a, which costs a fraction of the price, the Fold is really hard to recommend. But if you are a tech enthusiast, I'd be lying if I said using this phone hasn't been fun. It's been such a nice break from the typical smartphone experience. So if you are a power user who maybe travels a lot or has a long 
long commute on public transportation and you got a lot of time to kill, the Pixel Fold can be an absolutely great companion. But hey, that's just me and I want to know what you guys think. What do you guys think about the Pixel Fold? Do you think Google nailed it with their first folding device? Or do you think it's a swing and a miss? Curious to get your thoughts, let me know what you guys are thinking in the comments down below. And in case you guys want to learn more about the other Pixels that are available, check out these reviews here. They're going to help you be as informed as possible.